Today I'm taking a look at the Edelkron Focus Plus Pro. This is the latest version of the Focus module. As I showed in my earlier video, the previous model of the Focus module gave me a lot of problems, making it basically useless. I contacted Elkron about the problems with the unit, and they were awesome enough to replace the unit for me with a new model. So far, I have nothing but good thing to say about Elkron's warranty service. Let's take a look at how this uh, unit actually does. I'm hoping this one actually performs well and meets my expectations of what I really expect from it. You have the module itself, which is a lot smaller than the previous one. It includes three of these adjustable gear rings that you can install. This is a focus chart and that comes with it. it. Includes three different length rails so you can mount it and get the length appropriate for various lenses. These slide into this accompanying side clamp on the side of the unit. You can tighten down the small thumb wheel. Unlike the previous wired model, well, this one runs on batteries. And it finally has a power switch. This is a big deal, believe it or not. Uh, the, all the previous units not having power was an absolute frustration to deal with. So not only does it have a power switch, it has a small little display with it. It's packaged in the classic heavy-duty Edelchrome boxes. Beautifully laid out interior with foam. I just wish these were reusable. Uh, the amount of trouble they've gone through to making these boxes with the foam lining be so much nicer if this was some kind of storage system, kind of, um, you know, picture f Festool, for example. I'd much rather have cases that can be reused and modularly stacked and used to put equipment away and organize your gear rather than just cardboard boxes with foam in them. But nevertheless, they are beautiful. These gear rings are attached using the small notched clamp, grabs the gear ring from both sides. You cut the gear ring to length, adjust it, and then tighten down using this center screw. So I'm going to install this onto my Head Plus hand tilt unit. The camera mounting plate on the Head Plus already has a slot designed to accept the rails from the focus unit. And these just slide right in and have a similar twist lock mechanism. Hmm, I'm actually surprised there is a there's some kind of machining issue. Looks like a machining burr of some kind inside the mounting plate slot on my head plus here is not sliding in smoothly all the way through. Um, I'll take a look at that later. The old model, if you remember, came with a main rod and then a screw and extension. That actually saved material, but that screw mechanism could loosen up on you depending on how it was used. Depending on how much torque you're applying to your lens, it was possible to loosen that. So this is a this is a smarter idea to use separate rods. All right, now that I have it mounted to the head plus, I'm going to 
start up the app. So as soon as it powers up, it's doing an initialization of the lens by cycling it through to its maximum limit on both ends. I have to tell it if I'm currently at infinity or macro. In my case, I'm at infinity. This, this, was, a, this was a really annoying process on the last model. All right, it's nice to see that it stopped on its own without putting the, my lens through the kind of abuse the last model did. It's still pressing it pretty hard, but at least it comes to a stop. There we go. Okay, I like that. Yeah, the last setup, the setup on the last model was crazy. I mean, it just wanted all these distances, how far away you are, and I'm, I'm guessing those were useful for some lenses, but to have you do it on every lens, it was ridiculous. This is better. And the movement seems to be very smooth. I like that. And it looks like it, it re recognizes, obviously it knows what the limits of the lens are. I like that it's coming to a stop, coming to a soft stop right at the end without slamming the lens into its limits on both ends. So that seems to be much improved. All right, I'm gonna do a quick little, I'm gonna do a simple little setup here for now. I'm gonna place, let me, I'm gonna use this uh, included focus target and set it up over here. I'm gonna slide this unit back, make some room. I'm gonna do a basic little setup here for now. I'm gonna place the included focus target here. I'll use this so I have a reference of something that I can repeatedly focus on. I'll use this as position one. For this initial test, I'm keeping it pretty simple. So this will be the focus test. I'll focus in on this. To start with, let's just see how well it um, refocuses on the same spot. I do have a macro lens on this camera here, so I'm able to zoom in pretty close and get a very precise focus. I'll set this as position one. And then I'll make it out of focus, set that as position two, and let me go back and forth, go back to a, my original focus point. And it does not appear to be as sharp. Looks pretty close, not quite where I had it. Let me zoom in a little more so you can see better. So I've got it pretty much as focused as I can get it with my eye. This will be focus point one. And then move back to the out of focus, back to the focus point. It's pretty close, pretty close. Wait, definitely, it's definitely way better than the last unit because that thing just could not even come close. It's not quite exact. I was hoping for it to be dead on the first time. Close, but not 100% perfect. I don't see any obvious settings here, but maybe there's some adjustments for backlash and things like that. I'll try to tinker with those later if I find anything. If I go focus again, back into focus. What I'm gonna do is move it out of focus to the other direction, just in case there's a backlash, whether you're coming from the right or the left. So I'm gonna try it coming from both sides just to see if it makes a difference. So now out of focus, back in focus, out of focus. Let 
I'm going to hit record on the camera so I can capture this footage at the same time so you can see what the camera is seeing. So out of focus, back onto the focus point. So one thing I'm noticing, I don't know if you can see this, but that will shake when I reverse directions. So from that focus point, if I tap so I have two focus points very close together, one that I brought from the right, one that I turned the barrel and the lens from the right to achieve, and one from the left to achieve. So they're very close to each other, but nevertheless, so if I tap them one after the other, you notice this little shake? All right, let me see if I can get this paired up with the head plus now so we can run a couple of different points and cycle back and forth, see how that does. All right, I'm trying to pair it up. Use the smart pair feature. It's supposed to be, so So I've paired up with the head plus, but the focus module is not coming up. All right, let me power this off. All right, now when I power it up again, I see the I see the little update option. I see the little pop up for update required. This is something that doesn't come up automatically on its own for some reason until you do this a few times. I've had this issue with a lot of Edelcone devices where I'm trying to pair them up and just going back and forth. There's no message alerting me to what the problem is. So I've just learned now that it happens so often. Sometimes I just have to power things on and off over and over until it shows up. Here it is. Um, yeah, so this, this issue has been just a one of the things, one of the frustrations of owning Edelcrone gear is the constant updates. Um, and most of the time they're forced upon you. So you can be in the middle of a project, you can be out working at a client's location, and if it wants to force an update upon you, you will not be able to do anything until that update is complete. That is something they really need to fix. Um, obviously if you're equipment was working the day before, it should let you use a previous version until you have time to do an update. All right, now that it's back up, once again, the head plus synced up, focus module did not come up. Let me do smart pairing again. There's the focus pro, focus plus at the top, pair and connect. It's working. So it's doing the whole limit search thing on the lens again. It wants to know if I'm at infinity. And okay, it's back up. But again, it looks like now it's just the focus module and not the head plus. Let me see if I go back here. I believe it should have both things, the position for the head plus and let me try manually pairing these. Here are both of them. I can see them both listed, so it recognizes they're both there. I want them both to come up. Hmm. Once again, just to focus module alone. All right. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something here. It doesn't look right to me, but let me try it anyway. I'll make this position one. And lock that in. And then I'm going to move it over. And uh, let me just grab something here. It's a little box from a magnifying. I'm going to use this little box. It has some text on it. Set it over here. That'll be my second position. Now we have something I can focus on 
it helps to have letters or some kind of graphic. You know, it helps to have something on your target that you can consistently recognize if it's in focus. All right, that's my second point. Let's go back to the first. And nope. So it's just the lens. As I so as I expected, it's just the lens. The head plus did not register those position modes. All right. So I have to go through this pairing again. Let me try again. Pair and connect. There is a head plus. There is a focus plus. Connect to both. Nothing. All right. Uh, power everything down again. Power this head plus down. Power the focus plus down. Power this back up. And power the head plus back up. All right, let's check it out again. Let's see how it does. Smart pairing. Start. Some beeps. All right. Okay, okay, there's looking hopeful. It's going through the lens adjustment again. Okay, so cycling back and forth between these two targets. Like I said earlier, this is really not a very demanding test. These two points are fairly, located fairly close together. I'm not really going through a wide position change on either the head plus unit or the focus module here between these two points. But um, just something to get started with because the last unit couldn't even handle something like this. As it's cycling back and forth, the uh, the little uh, these small LED displays on here are kind of reflecting where it is in the movement. It's showing a little progress bar, reflecting where it is in the cycle. I suppose that might be useful if you're away from your controls, if you're just near the device, away from the controls, and you just want to know roughly how far it has before it's going to come to a stop. One of the reasons I invest in motion control gear is I'm looking for very high precision repeatability. Some of the work I do requires that I be able to take the same shot over and over multiple times, maybe with subtle changes on the subject to try to create certain effects. So it's critical to me that the motion control gear is really consistent in reproducing the same targets, the same points over and over. This is something that Edelkrone advertises significantly on their website, their products being able to do that. Um, but in real world usage, I found it's, it's sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So in this case, let's just cycle back and forth between these two points and uh, let's see how well it repeats. Um, so I'm gonna put up the footage for you so you can see the, the footage I'm capturing. In real life, this looks very smooth. But sometimes when you look at the actual footage, you'll pick up on things you couldn't see with your eye when just looking at the modules moving. All right, so here I am looking at the footage. One of the things that's immediately jumping out at me is every time it reverses. So it reaches its target and then it reverses and goes back. Notice a little jump that occurs in the shot. So there's a little movement happening. This was not obvious to me when I was filming. Um, so just notice it right there. When I come to the target, you'll notice it and notice it once again on the other end. <clears throat> so the focus is, the focus looks pretty good. Um, like I said, I was hoping for even sharper, but it's possible that this is a quick little test, so it's possible some of this is my fault. So for now, I'm gonna say I'm, I'm definitely much happier than I was with the last focus module. That was a complete failure. This one is at least appearing to do its job and hitting the focus points. Um, I'll do further testing 
once I start using this, I'm hoping I'll find some additional settings and maybe I can dial this in better and uh, get it as sharp as possible. Ideally, I'd like to see it as razor sharp as possible. Next, let me put a couple of fixed graphics on the screen so I can note the position when this comes to a stop at each target point. I'm going to position one green target right here centered on the target, on the upper target, and I'm putting a red rectangle centered around the number 10 over here. And as I cycle back and forth, hopefully it'll hold that position. It'll, hopefully it'll come to the same positions every single time. So I'm going to let it do this several times. Watch here on the 10. You see that little jump right there? And then once again, when it reverses up here, when it comes to stop, I have that bottom right corner positioned exactly on the center of that target. Right there, you see that 10? I have the bottom left corner of the green square of the green rectangle positioned in line with the center of the target. And right there, you see it. Right there, you see it kind of jitter back and forth a little bit when it reverses. So if you watch the 10, it comes to a stop with the 10 not quite lined up in the square, and then it does a little jump where it lines up. It does a little shake where it then does a little shake and the 10 lines up in the box briefly before it leaves. All right, so at least in these small cycles back and forth, it seems to be doing a pretty good job of repeating the positions consistently. So I'm really glad to see that. And I'm hopeful every time this is something I'm hopeful every time I use this gear. Having consistent repeatability is something I'm always looking for in my gear. So no matter what piece of equipment I'm using, I'm always looking for it to repeat the same targets over and over exactly with no shifts. Sometimes I can do it, sometimes I can't. All right, I'm going to stop here for now. That's my quick little intro to the new Focus Plus Pro. Um, all right, I'm going to stop here for now. That's my quick little unboxing and initial impression of the Focus Plus Pro. I want to thank Elkron for providing excellent warranty for their products and replacing the old effective unit with this new model. Thank God this new model became available pretty much right after I made my purchase of the previous version because I really would have been disappointed with that one uh, moving forward. Um, I see significant changes and improvements. This unit is, is definitely smaller and lighter. I like that. Definitely looks a lot more user-friendly. Overall, I'm mostly impressed with this unit, and I'm impressed with the customer service that Elkron provided in taking care of the problems. And um, so I'm feeling good about moving forward with this. I'm hoping this can help me do some really good projects. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, if you have any experience with using this module or any of the other gear. Um, if you have any tips and techniques, if you need any product photography done, I'm going to be doing a lot of instructional videos on how to take great pro product photography. And if you need any help with anything, feel free to reach out. And um, hopefully if you found this video helpful. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.